Woohoo! How's everyone doing? <laughs> so awake! <laughs> okay, I'm Judy, and I'm, I'm here to show you how to make more Angular, Angular developers now by fostering an inclusive, diverse community. Um, hello? There we go. So, preliminary slide. Let's lead the charge. This is a call to action. I believe Angular has a great opportunity right now. Across the country, there's a movement pushing for code literacy in everyone. Like, did you guys see the picture of the president learning JavaScript? Like, code.org? In our industry, there's a rising tide of visibility of the ways in which lack of diversity hurts us. And I'd like to add to what Brad said this morning about fostering cooperation uh, to make the dream of open source come alive. Uh, I want to add, add to that and say, let's. I'd like to call upon each of us to make Angular a friendly, inclusive community so that we can give people what they need to build awesome stuff. So that's why I'm here. So, uh, oops. Also, maybe my slides will load. Um, while they load, uh, I'll give you a little outline of my talk. So I'm going to tell you my story. I'm going to give you a case study of Rails Bridge, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. And um, I'll end with a call to action uh, to make NG Bridge happen. OK. Uh, I guess I'll keep hitting reload. Um, uh, I can just talk at you. <laughs> it's story time. OK, so um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I got to where I am. Um, I, think that, I think that it's really important to share your story. And so like, please come up to me afterwards and tell me how you got here also. Um, I think we, have, we can't forget that we're all humans. Um, yeah. Like we're doing all of this for each other. Oh, OK. And we'll turn off our Wi-Fi. OK, so a little bit about me. Um, I've been a video gamer for a long time. Um, I worked at a video game store, a LAN cafe in Berkeley called Eudaimonia, and hosted lots of events. We would watch StarCraft tournaments, so many nerds would pack in, and we'd tune in to watch live streamed tournaments from Korea at 1 a.m. our time. It was great. Um, and this was how I got a bunch of knowledge or a bunch of experience in building communities. Um, I found that a lot of times if I wanted to play a game like the World of Warcraft minis, game. If you didn't know, there was a World of Warcraft collect collectible miniatures game. Um, I needed to like, find people to play it with. And so the way to do that was to like, host events for it and just keep hosting them until people came. Um, so don't give up. Um. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Cool. And then I think we can just, if we go here, uh, there's a, um, is it in full screen? How many engineers does it take to use? Oh, this is good enough. You can just see all my notes. It's OK. <laughs> Woohoo, notes. All right, so um, um, OK, so I found my way into professional coding by way of a constructed language called Navi, um, which was the language spoken by the blue aliens in Avatar. So I got really involved in Navi. There's a passionate community at learnnavi.org, um, mostly by translating songs into Navi. Um, it was pretty ridiculous. And a language startup in the Bay Area called Mightyverse reached out to us and said, you guys are strange, um, but passionate. Will you record phrases for our language startup? Um, and so I acted as the community liaison. And that's how I met their CTO, Sarah Allen, who um, told me about this organization called RailsBridge. Um, and I'd done, like, I'd taken APCS in high school and, like, had done programming, but had taken a little break from it. And I was ready to come back. So right when I was ready to come back, and right when I was doing tutorials on my own, um, I met this woman who became my mentor. Um, and so I think a lot of life is like that. Like, you're ready for something, and then something comes along, and um, you take the opportunity. So um, this is how I found out about RailsBridge. Uh, I started going to hackathons and stuff, and won my first hackathon. And then I ended up getting to work for Sarah as a software developer. She's the one who gave me my first job as a software developer. And um, so I got 
really involved in the community. We did a lot of community stuff. So I'll more on that when I tell you about Rails Bridge. So um, now uh, I work at Indiegogo, a crowdfunding platform. Our first Angular app was a rewrite of our campaign editor. We went from a complicated, sprawling process over four Rails pages with noodly JavaScript all over the place, it didn't make any sense, um, to a, more, a much more intuitive single page app, greatly increasing the ease of launching and editing campaigns. Um, and so like, these were some of the first Angular users at our company. Just, um, uh, we've since expanded the angularization of the world uh, by proselytizing it to other engineering, other scrum teams that we have. Um, and uh, one of the best examples is of how we use Angular is um, our new Life uh, plat platform, which is um, an even easier use to use fundraiser platform for individuals. So um, uh, this brought me to like events. Um, Indiegogo hosted a girl geek dinner in San Francisco and like seven of us did lightning talks and instead of a lightning talk I sang mine. Um, <laughs> so uh, and then I got to take it international. So um, uh, I got to go to NG Europe and sing my song and share it with the Angular community at large. Thanks. <laughs> um, um, and while I was at NG Europe, and so this is like me getting to the point of it all, while I was at NG Europe, I looked around and there were almost like more women on stage than there were in the audience. And like you don't, you sort of don't notice it at first. Um, then you go along, um, and it reminded me a lot of Rails Bridge's origin story. So I see parallels between like um, new technologies uh, and what's happened. So uh, this brings me to like what is Rails Bridge, and I'll tell you the story about Rails Bridge, um, and and why I think it matters for Angular developers to hear this story. So um, so like. Uh, to take it to a different framework and a different language. Um, in 2009, uh, two people named Sarah were at Gogo Ruko, which is the San Francisco Ruby conference. And um, there's a statistic floating around that 20% of people who are working as professional software developers in Silicon Valley are women. Um, but when they were at this conference in 2009, uh, for at what at the time was like the new hotness, um, it, was catching, it was like catching on. Um, they saw, they saw six women among 300 men, which was 2%. And so they wondered why this happens. Like why, why even among women developers, like um, women seem to embrace the newest technologies at smaller percentages than men, even, even like correcting for the difference in the industry at large. Um, and this could be a totally separate like research topic. Um, but what's important here is that they did more than wonder. They decided to make more Rails developers by teaching Rails to a bunch of women, which sounds really simple. Um, and I just wanted to show you. So this is what uh, a Rails Bridge event looks like. Um, okay, I'll maybe if I do that. Okay, it's stu it's stuck on full screen. It's okay. So um, they started hosting an event called Rails Bridge. Um, which was a free Rails workshop for women and their friends. Um, they did everything open and copyable from the start on purpose um, because they hoped that other people would take the framework of what they worked on and replicate it in other languages. Um, they looked around at other organizations that they admired and adopted their successful tactics for fostering diversity, um, especially gender diversity. I know there's other kinds of diversity, but we focused on gender for these events. Um, so Women 2.0, is a community um, organization that hosts lots of conferences and stuff in San Francisco. And they came up with um, a tagline, let men be the plus ones for a change. So we accept students who are women and students who are men as long as they come as the plus one of a woman. So if there was a man who wanted to attend this free programming workshop, we asked them, like, bring your friend, coworker, fellow student, sister, niece, aunt, grandmother, um, and that way, we would at least have gender parity among the students. Um, and then the, all of the volunteers and organizers were any gender. So they asked all their friends and coworkers to help teach and watch their kids, childcare was important, and get the word out. Um, and it was originally designed for professional software developers like those other 20%. Um, 
uh, hanging out, doing Java and PHP. It was like, hey, come check out what we think is the new hotness. It's fun to learn something new. Like, let's lower the barriers of entry. Like, we'll we'll just show you in a one-day workshop. Um, so, uh, that's that's that was one of the original visions. RailsBridge has since grown to accommodate people who are totally new to programming, um, such as, for example, adults contemplating a career to, a career switch. So, um, at any given RailsBridge, we've taught people who who are like 20-year industry veterans, as well as people who've never like installed. A, an app on their Mac before because like IT always did it for them. So like um, you have to be able to, we've, we've been able to help like a wide variety of people. Um, so all of this was to serve the goal of exposing more like people, especially women, to Rails. Um, so, and it worked. This is a slide um, from a talk that Sarah May gave, one of the Sarahs that founded RailsBridge, in 2010, titled Moving the Needle, How SFRuby Got to 18%. And her talk, uh, which I can link, to, which I link to in the notes, is a story of how they increased the participation of women in the general San Francisco Ruby <laughs> meetups from two percent to eighteen percent in just a year. So um, th this is important. They hosted the the Rails bridges not as like siloed, like ghetto, like oh, hey, the women are going to be over here. Like they made sure to bring them back into the general Ruby hack nights that people hosted. Um, got people to talk at lightning talks, and then over time, um, they were able to actually move the needle, needle in a pretty significant way in just one year. So, um, so n having known this story, I looked around at NG Europe and I thought, like, like we can do this. <laughs> like, we can do this too. In fact, like, we must do this now um, because Angular isn't just like the new hotness. Like, it's still it's still a hotness, but like we we're like, it's, it's up to us to like, get the tool out to reach more people so that more people can build awesome stuff. So anyway, this idea of free workshops for Win and their friends spread to other cities and languages and frameworks. And um, I'll, I'll make another little aside to talk about a different programming community again. Um, one of the most visible successes of this uh, idea spreading is Python. So. Um, um, oh yeah, and I have this quote that I like from a, an article called A Toast Story that got picked up by NPR. It's a, a story about how, um, or it got picked up by This American Life, actually. Um, and it's a story of how, about troubled coffee in San Francisco and how one woman uh, relies on a support network of weak ties. And um, I just want to say this because I think talking, learning from other programming communities is important, is important because we have to remember that we're here as part of like a larger technical community and um, we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. And so um, we like, keep spreading ideas. So here's an example of their success. Um, the Python community also started running workshops, uh, most notably the Boston Python workshop, which was directly inspired by RailsBridge. And like they took the format and were like, boop. Um, so, uh, and one metric that the Python community has really moved the needle on is the percentage of talks at PyCon with a woman speaking. In three years, they changed this percentage from 1% in 2011 to um, 33% in 2014. And uh, this wasn't through any kind of like diversity quota or anything. It's, instead, it was getting more proposals into the pipeline to begin with. Um, so, uh, a woman named Jessica McKellar um, writes emails to all the programmers she knows who are women who thinks who she thinks would give great talks at PyCon, and actually she sends like many dozens and like even hundreds of these emails. Um, they start getting more and more proposals. Like, um, so um, let's take it like back home to Angular. So this is my proposal and my big ask of all of you. Um, RailsBridge uh, has recognized that this is a useful set of information. And so we created an umbrella organization called Bridge Foundry. So we want to make like a whole bunch of bridges um, so that we can teach all the technologies to everybody. So let's make NG Bridge happen. Um, uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about like what makes up a workshop. So here are the ingredients to like go home to whatever city you're from and like pop up an ng bridge in your angular user group. So, you need to get a, like some sponsors like 
a space. And a space that works for these kinds of workshops is um, a main area where you'll have like lunch with breakout rooms where you have classes. And the classes are like six people uh, separated by ability. Um, you'll, you need a sponsor for food. And don't forget like vegetarian, et cetera, options. Um, you need some ch uh, volunteers for childcare. Um, in San Francisco, Rails Ridge has been experimenting with hiring um, childcare from different services. So like that's also something that works. But um, these are important to, these are sort of like the basics of what you need. Um, childcare helps reduce the barrier of entry to like uh, working parents. Um, so then in terms of people, of course, you need volunteers, I mean, three kinds of volunteers. Um, facilitators, people who like run the workshop, make sure that food is arriving, um, send out the questionnaire to ask people how it went at the end, um, people to like promote the event, uh, and you also need teachers and TAs. Um, we've found that it helps to uh, set up a meeting for the teachers and TAs like the Wednesday beforehand. So we usually have these on like a Saturday and then we'll do a teacher meeting on the Wednesday beforehand to get everyone working. Um, you need a curriculum, um, which usually takes the form of a working app that a student can bang through in a day and then have something to show like, hey, like I learned to make this Angular app today and they can show their friends. Um, and that like also helps spread the word. Like you, you too can like go learn Angular, this much Angular in a day. Um, and of course, students. Um, it always helps to have an after party. Um, we like to uh, thank our volunteers by giving all of the volunteers a free drink ticket. Um, and like one interesting thing that happens with this model is that people will come in as students, and then they might come as a student a couple of times in a row. We try to have these um, every month. And then they'll start coming back as a TA or as an organizer. And then after that, after a couple of months, they'll start coming back as a teacher. Um, and then after that, like they've been, they've gotten exposure to all these sponsoring companies, um, and they get hired. So like this, this is like proven to work. I've seen it happen in front of my eyes over and over again. Um, this is how. This is one way of many that like we can make more Angular developers out of like people in our community who are already interested. So um, why your company should host? An NG bridge. Um, you'll have visibility to new Angular developers, of course, like the students, but which is obvious, right? And the, sec the second one is like um, also like in hindsight really obvious. What happened was that um, your your company. We saw that companies that were hosting these events, um, they had a very high recruiting value for these events for more senior developers as well, because these were the teachers the ones, the liaisons, the volunteers, the ones who are spending a lot of time. Um, and so like, this is one really good way to get the word out to the most engaged and active members of the community. So, like, so um, running intro workshops to, for Angular and getting a robust community of uh, volunteers is actually a great way to uh, attract senior devs to your, to your community. Um, and I have 19 seconds left. So, um, yeah, uh, there's a quote that Sarah Allen likes to say, which is, to boil the ocean, turn every 10th molecule into a heater. So um, come talk to me. Like, I hope that if you feel inspired, you go home and run events like this. Um, mentors matter. Uh, we can make more NG Fixits happen Igor, with a lot of help from Igor. Uh, we ran an NG Fixit number one to work on like the Angular core itself. We'll make NG Hack Nights, and if you have ideas, woohoo! Yeah, if you have more ideas for events, like go forth and make them happen. Um, I will help you. Uh, yeah, talk to me. Anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs>